pull. Oh, the we're link. live all right. Oh, we're live already. Okay, well, I'm looking <laughs> uh, on the YouTube page to see if I can see it. So, um, it, yeah, it's, it should say Dice Tower Tonight, take two. Hello there. Uh, welcome <laughs> to Dice Tower Tonight. Uh, we've been having a couple of technical issues. Uh, so we, uh, we did a little bit of restarting, and it looks like, so far, we are back up and running on take two. Uh, yes, here we go. Now, as we were saying, Crystal, <laughs> we've had, you've had an eventful week, um, in, in all sorts of ways. Uh, you closed on your house today, is that correct? Today, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, which is great, um, but this is not your new house. You are still broadcasting yes, from your, is, your house that you've been in. This is still my, my old slash current house, uh, only because since I did just close and take possession today, um, having the means to do a live stream without technical issues seemed nearly impossible. Uh, but, you know, of course, the universe decided to laugh at us. Chances are, if I had done it from a Microsoft Surface at my new house, we wouldn't have had any issues at all. Sure. Even though, yeah. No, I mean, this appears to be my issue. I... Um, it, it's... <laughs> My my restart seems to have fixed whatever the problem is. So uh, I so you have a new house uh, that you are gradually moving into over the next couple of weeks, um, and hopefully by our next show we'll be able to see what it looks like. I'm looking forward to getting a tour. Yes, that is definitely happening. I am moving in a hundred percent by the end of Sunday this week. So it's it's it, after that I'm in. I'm okay. not coming back. All right. <laughs> so. Fantastic. You all will definitely see my new house for our next episode. Um and I don't I don't know if there would be a way for me to give a tour uh <laughs> during well, the stream. Probably yeah. not, but you get a really I, long cord for your webcam and just Yeah, that of... would have to that would be a little bit difficult. Um or but get you the also... onboard, you could carry it around on the onboard webcam on the laptop. That's true. If I did the Microsoft Surface, that's possible. There you go. Uh, but you also have some exciting news regarding your house situation. Yes. Uh, when we spoke last, two weeks ago, I was just about to put the house on the market. Uh, our house went on the market last Monday, uh, a week ago Monday, and we accepted an offer on Saturday. So it, it was it was very intense for a while. We had a lot of showings, like two or three a day. Uh, so just constantly having to get the house clean and leaving and coming back. And um, uh, so we, we accepted an offer. Uh, we'll be closing sometime in November, but we do not have yet a place to live. So uh, now comes that panic of we have to find a house and, and it has to be, you know, there's we can't just be anywhere. We have to... Um, we have to do the, uh, um, there has to be a studio space where I can work there. We, we need to have enough room for the children and, and we want it to be a little bit better than the house we're currently in. Cause why else are we moving if we're not right. you know, trying to find more space? Uh, I want a game room, you know, something that I can set up in a lot of spaces that have had fantastic rooms for game rooms have gone like that. And we just haven't been able to, uh, to pounce. Um, chat is asking about weird handles on my doors. Do I have weird no. handles? No, they're talking about my new house. Oh. I post, uh, there's two bedrooms on the upper level of my new house that have extra handles on the doors for no reason. Literally none. Yes. There is no purpose. I have the, seen these the pictures. The best solution that we are, the answer that we've come up with as a collective group on the internet is that the doors came prefab either with holes or with those handles on them. Somehow, but then there's no, um, there's no thing on the side, on the inside of the door for like, it just, they're pointless handles. Like they're <laughs> literally handles on, and there's nothing else. And I, I, it's so silly. You know what? It's Halo, I see your comment in the chat there. And I did actually tell Eric that he, if he and I lived closer together, that I would welcome him and the whole fam in to my new place. <laughs> Which I do appreciate. We, we live some distance apart though. A um, little bit far, yeah. Uh, you know, tricky. all the way across the country. <laughs> uh, but this is not a real estate podcast. Even though we talked about real estate games a couple weeks ago, we should probably talk about some stuff we've been playing lately. Crystal, Absolutely. would you like to go first? Sure. So I've gotten to play a few board games recently. Um, and obviously this is a board game show, but I wanted to talk about something that's technically not a board game. Because okay. it has taken up 
a lot of my time. Anytime I haven't been dealing with house stuff over the past two weeks and I haven't been working, I have been playing the online game Among Us. This which... is the new hotness. Everyone <laughs> is talking funny? about this game. This game came out two years ago. Oh, wow. And for whatever reason, just in the past month or two, it has blown up online, not just in the board game community, but like the internet at large. So much so that the creator of the game has canceled the sequel that he was working on and is now going to integrate things from the sequel into the original game because it's become so popular. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. It is kind of a little bit bananas. Um, <laughs> so Among Us is a video game that is available for free on iOS and Android or $5 on Steam, uh, only wow. PC, not Mac though, which is important for some people. It is a social deduction game where you have up to 10 players that are all little space guys on a spaceship of some sort. And up uh, to a certain number of you are imposters. So just like any social deduction game, you've got good guys and bad guys and you don't know who the bad guys are. In this game, um, as a human, as a normal guy, you're trying to run around and complete tasks around the ship. And what's interesting is there's a whole bunch of different tasks and they're located in different areas and you have to do specific actions to complete them. It's not just click a button. It's like, oh, you need to click into this thing and then move a lever from up to down. Or you have to play Simon to like calibrate a thing. Or like they're all lit a little bit different. And some of them take a little bit of time and they cover up part of your screen while you're doing them. So in theory, while you're running around completing all of these tasks, someone might run up and murder you. <laughs> <laughs> because the imposters are attempting to kill off the rest of the crew before the humans complete all of their tasks. Uh, if the imposters can get the ratio down to one to one, meaning there is the same number of good and bad guys, then the bad guys win. Yep. Um, if or if the humans complete all of their tasks, they win. Uh, or if they eject the imposters. So um, the voting in this game is similar to other social deduction games. If a human comes across a dead body, they can report it and then a meeting happens. Um, you're not talking to the other players unless there is a meeting going on. So everyone is silent for most of the game. Okay. And then when you come together in a meeting, you all discuss, you know, where was the body found? Who was nearby? Oh, I saw someone running away from the body. And then you have the opportunity to vote people out. And just like any other game of this style, sometimes you vote out a good guy, sometimes you vote out a bad guy. If you can vote out all of the bad guys, then the humans automatically win as well. The thing that is specifically so endearing to me about this game in particular is there is no player elimination. If you get killed by an imposter or you get voted out by the group, you still have things to do in the game. If you're a human, you are a ghost and you must complete your task list for the humans to be able to win. Huh. You can't just sit there idly at that point, you have to go and do your tasks. And what's neat as a ghost is you can fly through walls because you're a ghost. So you can actually get your tasks done much more quickly once you've been killed, okay. which is kind of funny. If you're an imposter and you get killed, um, you can no longer murder people, but you can still perform sabotage on the ship because the imposters have the ability to mess with some of the systems on the ship and also to close doors in specific rooms to make it harder for the humans to move around. Uh, the other thing the imposters can do when they are human, not ghosts, is they can jump through vents um, and travel more quickly around the ship. But since the imposters are the only ones that can use the vents, if you see someone jump into or out of a vent, you know they're a bad guy. So what do you do at that point? Well, there's a big red button in the middle of the cafeteria or wherever on the map. You can run as quickly as you can to that button and hit it, and that causes an emergency meeting that is not prompted by a dead body. Okay. The artwork is cartoony and... Mostly cute, although I will say that the death animations are a little bit gruesome. It is still cartoony, it's still hand-drawn, but they do depict some brutal killing methods, like okay. involving like a knife or a gun. Again, it's all cartoony, but I, I know that that can be bothersome for some people, so I want to make sure I say that. Uh, although, admittedly, I have played this with kids. Like, my friends who have kids that are old enough, like, I've played it with them. And kids love it. 
and I adore it. I've only owned the game for like two weeks and I've already played more than 20 hours of this game, mostly with some friends in the Brothers Murph Discord uh, channel. And we've been having a really lovely time with it. And it's on honestly super great. I'd say if you are a person who generally does not like social deduction games at all, then I would say it's probably unlikely that this is going to, you know, be for you. But if you're a, a person that likes some social deduction games, the, the, the ways that this one is good compared to others is it is quick. Games only take maybe 15 minutes. Hmm. And again, there's no player elimination. You are always involved in some way in the game for the whole time, no matter what. Um, and it, again, it's cartoony and it's cute. It's not super gruesome as far as video games go. So I'm loving it. I know I had mentioned it to you, Eric, when I was kind of first starting to play it. You did. Uh, and it is one that I've been interested in. But the way that this, the last two weeks have gone <laughs> since we spoke last, I, I've had, you know, some people ask, you know, do you want to join in on, on a stream or, or you know, let's get, get a game together. I'm like, I, I don't know what any individual day is going to look like right now. I can't plan for anything. So maybe when things settle down, I will be able to give this a try. But, uh. I, I, it does sound fun. I would like to give it a whirl. The one thing I'm trying to see, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to announce this or not. So I, I hopefully I won't make anyone upset, but I, there's a good chance that this coming week on the 6th, which I think is Tuesday, um, that there might be a, a playthrough of this happening with the Salt and Sass crew you all know and love, Mandy and Suzanne and me and a whole bunch of other people. They are good um, folks. And if I wasn't supposed to say that, then I didn't say that. And that's not happening at all. But um, I would say maybe, you know, keep keep posted because that I believe is definitely happening this coming week. So I, if y'all want to see the game, that's the best way to do it. <laughs> I am friendly with Salt and or Sass and I, uh, I should probably... See if I can get in on that. But I don't know yet if that Tuesday is going to work. We'll figure <laughs> it out. Uh, so I had a chance to play a game with my kids. We're going to talk about a kid's game next for me. And this is probably, I would say if I had to pick Haba's number one bestseller. I don't have numbers on this. But my guess is that the number one Haba game is Animal Upon Animal. Uh, it, it ranks very highly on tons of recommendation lists. When somebody says, I want a game for my kids, this is the game. Uh, it's a lovely little dexterity game about stacking up wooden pieces in various shapes. And there are two new versions of Animal Upon Animal, that uh, both of which I got to play just recently. There is Animal Upon Animal Dinos, which is dinosaur themed, and Animal Upon Animal Unicorns, which is unicorn theme. They've got this nice little plastic window, which has plastic on it, so it doesn't become a hole in the box once you open it up, which is nice. Um, they are basically the same game. They are basically also the base game of Animal Upon Animal. They, uh, they are a complete game in and of themselves. The dino version builds off... Of, so if you've seen the, the basic original version, it's built off of a, an alligator. Um, this one uses a prehistoric alligator. It's the same piece. It's just painted differently. Um, but then you've got you got an adorable little T-Rex and and a nice brontosaurus. Although I don't think this is called a brontosaurus. Did you know they changed all no. the names of all the dinosaurs? Yeah, I heard this at some point that like the brontosaurus isn't real. And like I kind of felt like my childhood was a lie. And I still stand the brontosaurus, even if he technically isn't called that anymore. I think this is a stegosaurus, but I'm not sure. Uh, a possibly triceratops. Oh yeah, that's and, definitely a triceratops. And then I think a giant tortoise, which is kind of cool. Oh. Uh, and then for some reason, a, a big fang. Um, <laughs> a saber tooth tiger. A, a saber tooth. Uh, yeah. And then uh, a nice, um, a very clear die with all these different values on it. Uh, real quick, the game is that you start out with that centerpiece, and everybody distributes the pieces, the the animals. You get one of each animal. Uh, and then you roll the die. And if you get a one or a two, you have to place one or two of your animals on the stack without toppling the stack. Uh, if you get a hand, you get to give one of your pieces to an opponent and they have to stack it. Uh, if you get the little crocodile symbol, you can expand the base by placing something on the table that touches the base of the structure. And the last thing is a, where is it? It's a question mark. 
which says, all right, everybody at the table, what piece should I place? And so they all decide what the most difficult piece for you to place would be, and they do that. Um, so that's the, the dinosaur one. And if you, the, the object is to get rid of all of your pieces. Um, if you do cause something to fall and you're playing the basic version of the game, you only have to take two of the pieces that fell. Uh, if you play the advanced rules, you have to take up to five of the pieces that fell and put them back in your pile. So now you're further away from winning the game. Uh, the unicorn set has all the you know, different color palette. Uh, the die, it's the same same symbols, basically. But it's like, I don't know if you can tell here. It's like a glittery... Like metallic. It's like a metallic glittery pink, um, which fits the, the unicorn theme, but is a little harder to see. You know, pink... Metallic pink on gray is a little tougher, whereas the uh, this is a much more straightforward black on, on gray. It's just easier to see. Um, but you've got, like, petals. These are a little tricky because they're so round. Um, yeah. Some doves. Several different designs of unicorns. Uh, there's sort of a jumping one. and, and Oh, and the, the base... This is another reason it differs from the, the, the basic set. The base is not an alligator or a crocodile. It's like this, um, it's a mountainous little... glade, I guess. But yeah. those those jagged edges offer some nice building points, um, it, which is a little different than the crocodile. So you can play either of these as its own thing, but no, we didn't do that. We didn't just play with one set. We didn't just play with two sets. <laughs> this is Animal Upon Animal Balancing Bridge, which is one of the variants. Um, this also contains Animal Upon Animal The Duel and the original Animal Upon Animal. We opened this up, both boxes, and played with one of every animal in the game. It took a while. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> um, so it, that was fun, and there's no reason why you can't do that uh the dual the dual characters because it's a two-player game uh you can only do this as a two-player uh because you won't be able to evenly distribute the animals if you have more than two players but everything else there's four of everything um and so you could play a mega game we did find that playing by the advanced rules where when something falls you have to take five didn't really advance the game very much <laughs> <laughs> because there are so many pieces, it's going to topple at some point, And then it's like, oh, great, let me take all this back. So we switched pretty quickly to just keeping two, which gave the attrition a little more momentum. Um, and my, my son was getting a little bored. Um, by just It just wasn't moving very quickly. Uh, but once we went back to the two-point, two-piece rule, uh, things moved fast again, and it really wasn't that much longer than a, a basic game of Animal Upon Animal. It's, it is still a lovely game, and adding more pieces of more shapes is always good. Um, so amongst the two uh, new additions, which are currently, according to what I heard from the folks at Haba, Barnes & Noble exclusives until the end of the year, uh, although you can, during virtual conventions, order it from Haba directly. So those are your two options right now. Uh, after the end of the year, it should be more widely available wherever you can buy your games. Um, of the two sets, I think I prefer the, the pastel dinosaurs for the clarity of the die, but I like the base piece from the unicorn set. And there's, I mean, there's a lot more, like, legs and stuff. Like, here, look at the... The difference between, you know, the stubby legs on that Triceratops versus really long legs on this unicorn, which allows you to hook it on things a lot better. And, you know, there's advantages to both. I'm going to keep both. I think all those pieces are going to go in that big box and we're just going to have Uber set real soon. But I wanted to show off the, the packaging for both. Anyway, Animal Upon Animal, one of the best kids games Lovely fun for young kids, and um, and great pieces, great toy factor, and two new versions. You can't go wrong with it. What's funny is um, T from Haba very kindly sent me a couple of games recently, including one of the new sets. And uh, they intended to send me the unicorns because, of course, like I that's kind of my jam. Yep. And T accidentally typed in the wrong product code, so oh, I ended yeah. up with the dinos instead, which I love dinos, don't get me wrong. But now that you've shown off the unicorn pieces, I'm kind of like, oh, I 
like, I really want unicorns. Well, but... when we come over to move in with you, when we can't find a house, I'll I'll bring this. Yeah. I'll be sure to. He offered to send me the unicorns as well. And I said, no, that is like fully not necessary. I do not need. Honestly, I might buy the unicorns for myself at some point. Because really, I love Hava's stuff. And they, uh, but yeah, they sent me a couple other games that I'm very excited to try. Uh, Fiverr Findin. Mm-hmm. And color it. They're coloring roll and write game, and yeah. I'm both of those. I've heard very good things about. Yes, uh, Fiverr Finding. I do have. Uh, I haven't played yet with the kids, but I got to play a couple of rounds at Spiel last October. T showed me uh, those at the fair, and I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed it, and I want to try it with the kids. Uh, but it's on the on the shelf. Very cool. Well, I'm glad that you enjoyed stacking lots and lots of animals together. But how about we play a game with the chat, Eric? I would love to. They're they're busy okay. talking about the Brontosaurus and what happened. Honestly, I, I love the, the detailed dino conversation that has been happening <laughs> in the chat. That is super great. All right. Well, Eric, I will admit, uh, because of all of my house stuff, things have been a little bit busy, a little bit uh, bananas here in my life. And so, so we're I playing was playing a game thinking... about bananas. Yes, okay. definitely. Uh, but I, and I was thinking about just going to just one because it's our kind of our standby, it our is. staple, and we all love it. It works. But I, I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I recently was taught um, a board game or an online version, essentially, of a board game, which is what you and I do here. And so I wanted to bring that here. Uh, Eric, have you played the party game Blank Slate before? Oh, boy. Uh, it sounds familiar. But I, I can't recall. Please okay. tell me more. Yes. So it is a very simple party game. And I will give the disclaimer right now that what I am about to teach you may not exactly match the actual rules of the game because I do not own Blank Slate as of right now. But it is simple enough and that I think the modified version I played with some friends online will work really well here. So um, in Blank Slate... Um, you are given uh, a prompt on a card that contains a single word and a blank either before or after that word, such as, so this is not, this is an example. This is not going to be part of the real game. So in this instance, it is blank apple. Okay. Everyone who is playing then writes down a word or in your case says out loud because you won't have to write anything down um, that they want to put into that blank. And it can form a two word phrase or a compound word if they so choose. In this case, I think it would most likely end up being um, a two word phrase, but it has to be a single word that goes in the blank. And your goal is to try and match with one other person. If you match with one other person, you'll get two points. If you match with more than one person, you'll still get a single point. But ideally, you don't necessarily want to say the thing that you think everybody's going to write down. You want to say the thing that only one other person might write down. All right. Uh, Coralou is asking if proper nouns are okay. And again, this is not necessarily based on the real rules of the game, but I'm going to say yes. Um, and do with that as you all so choose, as long as it is a single word. So yes, some, of, some people in the chat are do, using the example to say things like green, caramel, yep. Crab, all yep. of those things make sense. I was going to um, say so, crab. Uh, I don't know if it matters. <laughs> right? Yeah. So what we're going to do, Eric, is you're going to be playing with the chat. Um, I am going to take the first five answers that show up in the chat in all caps. So again, chat, if you want your answer to be considered, you will need to put it in all caps. And again, sometimes YouTube displays comments in a different order um, than what you all see. So I promise I am reading off the first five that come into my list, but it may not match what you all see in the chat on YouTube. Um, and Eric, you will get two points if you match one other person, and you'll get one point if you match more than one person. Okay. And if you don't match anybody, you'll get zero points. And gotcha. you all in the chat... Uh, even if I don't read your answer out loud, I'm going to say that you all can also keep track of your own score. So if <laughs> of the first five answers plus Eric's, if you match one other person, give yourself two points. If you match more than one person, give yourself one point. And at the end of the game, we'll see how well you all scored. Sounds good. Does that make sense? I think, I but think this so. This is neat because I'm going to let everybody kind of compete a little yeah. bit individually. I like it. Which you I'm get to correct that that... your own tests. Right? <laughs> okay. 
So we're going to go. So you don't have to hide anything, Eric. There's nothing necessary. Or, oh, oh you I, have to hide the chat. I've, I've hidden the chat. I can't see it yes. on either screen. Okay. So our first prompt here is blank worker. Blank worker. Okay. So chat, um, you all, again, you have to do all caps for me to count your answer. You're going to put in a single word that would fit in that blank that would go in front of the word worker. And then uh, Eric is going to give his answer here in a minute. And we've already got one answer in the chat. We've got two answers in the chat. Coralie was on top of it. She okay. was right there. We've got three answers, four and five. Okay, so this is just the first five. Okay. Um, so I've got them. Uh, so Eric, what would what word do you want to put in front of worker? I will put social in front of worker. Okay. Eric said social. So you all can keep putting your answers in the chat, even if you weren't one of the first five, because again, you'll be able to compare yourself to Eric and the first five. The first five were steal, day, steal again, wood, and meeple. No! So... Eric did not match with anybody. Um, the two people who said steal would get two points each. So Coralou and Billy Murphy definitely get two points. Um, and then the others wouldn't get points unless you were one of the ones later that put something in. Uh, Coralou said social was a good one though, Eric. So you got some props, I, if I nothing get else. I props. Props are worth half a point. Yes, definitely. Maybe All there's right, an so exchange then... rate. I could do like three props to a point. All right. So now we're going to do blank place a single word correct a single word got it blank place so the good is not right yeah you can't say although the final season is now on netflix so anybody who hasn't watched the last season of the good place should most certainly go do that because it's amazing um okay i have one answer i don't think that's a real answer <laughs> doesn't make any sense so i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna skip that one okay i apologize hey, if that was intended you're the to... judge you can yeah okay we definitely have enough answers at this point so let's see here i'm gonna okay so eric what what are you gonna put in front of the word place i will say park place park place i mean it is a very board gamery answer it right is. yes all right so the first five answers again i'm skipping one because it doesn't make sense and i i apologize again if i if should have done that not done that but we're gonna say uh park ah uh -huh. yeah happy uh huh park again oh okay good and happy so the people who said happy will each get uh, two points. So that's Eric and William. And then the people who said park, David and Kabuki Kid and Eric will all get one point. Um, and then, uh, yep. So everybody else can compare themselves to those answers. And, oh, <laughs> Wolf said, uh, my lag is really long. So that was why, uh, the answer I saw did not make sense. <laughs> it was, it was connected to the other question. I think so. All right. So we're moving on to number three. It is blank mint. Hmm. Blank mint. Okay. Huh. Somebody somebody that was not in the top five for that last one said Melrose Place. There you I like go. It. That's good. <laughs> okay. All right. We've got one answer in the chat. We've got two answers in the chat. Wolf, if you refresh the page on YouTube, it may help with the lag a little bit. Um, no guarantees, but... All right, one, two, three, four, five. I've got okay. the first five answers. So what are we saying, Eric, for blank mint? I will say pepper. Pepper mint. Okay, I like it. So answer number one, we've got breath. Number two, spear. Oh, okay. Number three, Franklin. Yep, I thought about that number one too. Number four, pepper. Yeah! And number five, pepper again. Oh, <laughs> golly. So I thought about For anyone spear. who said pepper. Um, I actually thought about Franklin as well. That was... That's interesting, yeah. All right. Next up, we've got... We're going the opposite direction. We're going game blank. 
game blank. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I like whoever said thin mint for that's, that last that's one. That's very good. That's very a good, good cookie right there. That's a good. That is that is definitely a good cookie. Oh, thanks, Kabuki Kid. That's awesome. Kabuki Kid put number four with a line in the chat so people could see. Very helpful. That's uh, great. I would do that, but if I type, you all will complain about my loud keyboard. So. <laughs> I would never complain about your loud you keyboard. You wouldn't, but the chat probably would. All right, we definitely have five answers. Okay, so we've got game blank. What are, we, what are we saying for game blank, Eric? I'm going to hearken back to one of my favorite defunct podcasts and say game on. Game on. Nice. All right, so let's go over to the top five answers over here. One, two, three, four, five. Number one is board. Yep. So game board. Number two is right, as in the company, game right. Yep. Number three is over. Okay. Game over, man. Game, Game over. over. Number four is also over. And number five is day. Ah. So the people who said over will each get two points. And then uh, everybody else did not match anyone. Do, 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 do. All right. So next up, dice blank. Dice blank. Do you go with the obvious one, uh, which will likely get you a point? A point. Or do you? <laughs> this is because this. I again, we're only. You know what? I'm gonna say from here on out. I'm gonna take the first six answers instead of five. We're gonna we're gonna mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna take six. Increases so the will, danger. So will will everyone say the obvious answer, or will they not? I've got one answer. I've got two. I've got three. I've got four. I've got five, and I've got six. All right. Six hmm. answers, Eric. Okay. What are you okay. going to say for dice blank? Tray. Dice tray. Okay, tray. so he's not going with the obvious. So in order, one through six, we have tower. Okay. Tower. Yeah. Tray. Ah. Uh -huh. Masters. Hmm. Bag. Okay. And dojo. Which means you get two points, All Eric. Right. Two points. It worked. But so did you Tower, though. One. There were only two towers, right? There were only two towers as well, yeah. <laughs> but if <laughs> I had tower. said Tower, I would have messed it all up. So you I sure gave would've. you points, chat. Yeah, Kabuki Kid and Coralu, you can thank Eric for your extra point and you anyone else can. who said that after the fact. All righty. How many Next questions up, do we have, Crystal? Uh, We have three more. Okay. I did eight total. All right. Next up is... Blank tower. <laughs> Do I almost make you spit out your water? <laughs> oh, blank tower. I wasn't ready for that one. <laughs> okay. So we'll see. We'll see again what the uh, what the chat says here. Oh boy. Okay. I think I'm ready. And don't forget, you all, if you want to put an answer in that it needs to be in all caps, because otherwise I'm not going to take it just to make it easier for me to spot things. And we do have six answers at this point. So okay. one, two, three, four, five, six. We got some good ones here. I like it. All right, Eric, we've got six answers. What are you going to say for blank tower? Going to go with my previous career and say radio tower. Radio tower. Okay. So going over to the top six answers, we have... Rapunzel's. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was the first one to pop up from Coralie, and I really like it. <laughs> we have dark. Nice. We have dice. Yep. We have dark again. We have Eiffel. Oh. And we have ivory. Oh. So no matches for you, Eric. But the people who put dark are going to get two points each. Okay. No other matches. It's, All right. it's tricky to try and be just unique enough. I think that's where this game is interesting. Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's yeah. Like, it's kind of like just one in that way, except you don't have to be fully unique. You just need to be a little bit unique. Right. All right. Number seven is coming up. Here we go. We've got two blank. T-O-O, -O, two blank. 
Hmm. Huh. Uh, many bones is not one word. <laughs> that would be a very funny word. <laughs> many bone. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Okay, we've got we've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six answers in the chat. Eric, what are you thinking for for two blank? I, you know, I'm probably missing something obvious, but I'm gonna say too close. Too close. Too okay. Close. All right. The first six answers in the chat are in order: much, mm. much again, yep, late, many, much. One more time. And bad. Ah, oh, too bad. Too bad. Too much. Too late. <laughs> too many. So the people who said much will get one point each. Um, and then anybody else um, who matched the other answers would get two points each from the people who didn't get their answers selected. All right. And this is the very last one, Eric. I'm sitting at four points. I got to get I gotta get it five. I want to put a little hash mark on my... There you go. We've got night blank night blank okay <laughs> somebody in the chat said two poc <laughs> <laughs> which you know <laughs> but i like it so <laughs> uh yes i think many bones should have won that, I should <laughs> many, have bones. many bones many bones I'm going to name, when I get a dog, I'm going to name it Many Bones. Many Bones. <laughs> All right. I've got a whole bunch of answers coming through here in the chat. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got the first six, Eric. What are you thinking for night blank? Shift. Night shift. Night shift. Ooh, okay. All right. Let's look at the first six here. We've got <clears throat> owl, court, yep. trap. Owl again, hmm. time, and court. So no uh, matches for you, Eric. But I uh, the got so many for the chat. I know. The people who said both court and owl, though, get two points each. Um, so I'm going to assume, because nobody has put it in the chat yet, that nobody figured out my little, uh, the, the way I set this game up particularly. Oh. <laughs> but in, uh, case, I think I, in case okay. anybody hadn't noticed it is worker Work, place, place mint <laughs> game dice tower two two and night, night. <laughs> that is great no i did not get no i didn't i didn't get i didn't it. think anybody would but I, I, I was like what should i do i wanted to kind of match the theme and i was like i don't know how to make it match the theme and i was like well then let's just pick words that are the theme that is i mean just go straight down the middle that is the theme that's it and honestly that kind of shows how neat and flexible blank slate is as a game is like i didn't use cards from the game i just made this up using a phrase and they yet they, we had tons of answers for each one of those if you all uh eric you should definitely scroll back through the chat later and look we, we had some really creative stuff coming through in the chat uh after the first six answers <laughs> yes very nice uh so we should probably jump to our our topic of discussion for the night uh as as Crystal explained in her theming, uh, we wanted to talk about some worker placement games, and uh, there worker placement is such a wide topic. Uh, it is it is a mechanism that has been used in many many ways. Uh, we often hear of the first one of the early worker placement games being Kalis, uh, but I I pulled out one that's I think a little earlier than that, and that's Bus, the Splatter title, uh, where you get like twenty. 20 actions, uh, 20 worker cubes, and, and you put them on actions to make stuff happen, um, and that's all you get for the whole game. Once you're done placing your 20 cubes, that's the end. Um, how do you define what a worker placement is, Crystal? What, what makes it a worker placement game? I mean, for me personally, it's literally you put a thing onto another thing to signify that you want to do that thing, basically. Like, that's yep. kind of the broad... Um, but I actually wanted to know what Board Game Geek 
defined this as. And I had actually not necessarily, like there's a big paragraph under the worker placement mechanism that explains a lot of stuff, including some of the earlier games that use this mechanism. But what's interesting in this description is that the very beginning of it says that worker placement is more precisely referred to as action drafting. And I had never actually heard that before, but it makes sense. You are generally drafting an action and often making that action unavailable to the other players. Yes. Which, uh, that's not the case in all worker placement games. In some worker placement games, uh, other players can still follow you and do the same action, um, but maybe at a penalty or they don't get as much from it. Um, or sometimes when you do an action multiple times, you get a benefit from doing it multiple times. So there's a lot of different ways that worker placement has been used. Um, and I find that this is one of the genre of games that I enjoy the most. And I think for me, the biggest reason for that is because the the thing you're doing is relatively simple. You have maybe a lot of actions to pick from, but you, the thing you have to do is just pick one of them. Yeah. Put a thing there and then do that action. And usually the result of that pick is a pretty simple thing. Often it's you're just drafting a resource or you're gaining a card or, or something. Um, yeah. And, and so the the turns are very discreet. And while you may be thinking about your actions, they they do tend to go rel- relatively quickly around the table if you're taking turns placing one worker at a time. Absolutely. And it it makes these games somewhat easier to teach than some other uh, Euro style games, I would say. And the other thing that I particularly like about them is that the conflict is usually not very direct. It's more passive. Yep. Um, like for me, I don't like to be super antagonistic in games. Um, and it feels less bothersome to me as a player to take a space than to attack someone's forces. You know, yes. like it's okay. Even if I know that they probably want to go to that spot, there's no guarantee of that. So it's not like I am choosing to block a person often. It's right. just, I'm going to go here. And if you wanted to do that, I'm sorry, too bad. And it doesn't feel as mean or nasty. Yeah, it's it's almost it's almost like the actions available to you are just another type of resource. And so the the preventing another player from getting a resource or, or getting there first feels less in your face than than a direct conflict. Although, when you're the one that just got their position taken, like, I needed to go there. My game hinged on my taking that spot, and you went there first. That can feel pretty direct conflict to me. And I think that's where the really interesting strategies kind of show through in these types of games, too, is you, at the beginning of a round, you might go, okay, I need to get some food and do this over here and do that. And choosing the order in which you do things can really make a big difference, particularly Mm -hmm. based on what the other players do. So you say, okay, well, I need food, but I'm going to go do this other thing first, and then somebody else takes the food spot. And now your whole plan has kind of been upended, and you kind of have to decide on the fly how you're going to adjust. And a lot of worker placement games do tend to provide multiple paths to getting certain things done. It is, I think, at least in a lot of the ones I enjoy, it's not often the case that a sole resource can only be obtained one way. I mean, there are certain things that do that, but usually, okay, well, that's the place where you get food. But if you go to this other spot, you can trade in other things to also get food. That kind of stuff tends to be pretty prevalent. Um, So that's, you often don't get completely locked out, which I also enjoy. Yeah. um, I mean, there are some games certainly where there is, there are some very valuable resources or actions near the beginning of the game i'm thinking i might as well pull it out um of agricola you know another one of the granddaddies uh uve rosenberg where you have this evolving market of actions you start out with you know four or five out on the board and and then gradually add them as the game goes on and as soon as the add a worker space shows up it's the only option for doing that and that becomes very popular and and actually getting proper turn order when that might show up is is kind of important getting first shot and being in a position where you can add that extra worker when it does show up is an important part of of this game um but then later on more of that space shows up uh so it becomes easier to take those very important actions 
But that limitation is a major part of Agricola. Uh, only one person gets to take that action when it first shows up. Uh, something similar or related in Champions of Midgard, there is a spot that's available right from the beginning of the game where you can go and pay amount, an amount of resources to get an extra worker. But the first person to go there pays a larger amount of resources. And then as the game progresses, as more people go to that spot, it becomes cheaper for the other okay. players to go there. So it's an interesting do I spend more to get that extra worker now and think that I'll hopefully be able to recoup the costs? Or do I wait until other people have claimed their workers so that way I can get mine at a cheaper cost? And those types of decisions, I, I really, those are interesting. Yeah. And I've played in different ways. Sometimes I go early, sometimes I go late. And uh, I like that those types of decisions are, at least for me, usually not super obvious. Like in Agricola, you're saying it's pretty much a go-to, but in something like Champions of Midgard, there's never been a time where I was 100% certain, like, this is when I should do this thing. I just yeah. kind of have to guess. Uh, so when it comes down to, uh, there's sort of two sides of the fence uh, when it comes to placing your workers on an action space. Either that locks it out for everyone else for that round or until those pieces are removed, or there is some option where someone can pay a cost to take that action anyway. Sometimes it's you have to put two workers there or one more than whatever was there, or you have to put a, a more powerful worker in that space. Or uh, in Carson City, you can have a gunfight and maybe <laughs> knock them off the space. Which, which of those do you prefer? Do you like the simpler, once I have this, it's mine and you can't have it anymore, or the more usually complex and nuanced you can pay an extra cost now. It's going to cost you more to take that action. I, I like the nuance. I, I also especially like, for me as a player, having flexibility. So I like, you know, okay, somebody else took that spot, but I can still do it if I want. It just will cost me more. So, because that's an easier, or that's a more interesting decision, I think. If if it's locked out entirely, okay, well, I, I go somewhere else then. And that's less interesting to me. I think trying to decide between, do I go somewhere else cheaply or do i pay more to do this thing that yeah. they already did i think that's a more interesting decision to make yeah i, I think i agree um it, it offers more possibilities if if you yeah. aren't totally locked out but it may still mess up your plans because now you have to spend two workers or that extra money to go somewhere when you were relying on that resource or that extra worker to do something else I will say one of my favorite recent worker placement games does something pretty unique. Um, so there is the West Kingdom series um, that has come out. And I will admit, I've only played Architects. I have not played Paladins or Vicon yet. Yep. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word right, but hopefully it It depends close. on whether you're being French or not. It's either Viscounts or Vicon. Okay, well, hopefully I, I did the French version some justice. Yes. Uh, but again, I've only played Architects, but I love that in Architects, you can always put a worker with a few exceptions basically anywhere you want. It doesn't matter if other people are there or if you are there already, and you get more of the thing if you have your own workers in that spot already. So you, if you go to the food spot and you already have a worker there, you'll get more food. And there is a spot you can go where then you can round up characters from the board and put them in jail or yes. if they're your own pieces you can take them back off the board so the, the pieces don't come off the board until somebody chooses to remove them and yeah. again even though that sounds mean like sending somebody else's workers to jail it never feels mean in the game because when somebody has four workers on a spot and you know they're about to go collect five food like nobody is gonna like begrudge you for scooping them up yeah. and sending them to the jail because of course they're gonna be like yeah that was that was i was getting too much food like everybody yeah. it feels friendlier even though it sounds like a mean action i really want to play paladins and vcon at some point i know they're online i really should just find someone to, to play them online with me because i adore paladins uh i have not played uh either of the, the of the newer ones i've played architects and that's that's it so um i i would like to play the the newer additions and and uh you know distillations of the system for sure and if anyone in the chat has played all three of them and wants to share with us what their favorite is let me know because uh I, I'm, I'm probably going to try all three of them at some point but i uh yeah i'd love to hear if you all like the other two so there was a question that flew by uh just a couple minutes ago um what 
Ta here we go. Coralu asks, so the real question is, do you prefer meeples, dice, or sand timers for your workers? What do you think of the, the non-standard uh, workers in worker placement game? I will admit that I think I tend to gravitate t toward the meeples more. The games that I really like tend to be meeples, but I also like the uniqueness and how game designers are using other components as worker placement things. So the, the <laughs> one of the unicorns escaped. Yes. <laughs> It was making a break for it. It was trying to work or placement itself into Alien Frontiers, which is Ooh -hoo -hoo. what I was going to say. Um, like, I think Kitchen Rush is the most obvious example of the sand timer one, um, where you're, you know, literally using sand timers to complete actions and you can't move them until the sand has run out. Um, but dice placement games as worker placement games are also very interesting. Um, I've played... Marco Polo, the original one, not the second one. And I, while I appreciate the game's design and I think it's really neat, it was not for me. <laughs> like it was just the type of complexity in that game was not what scratched my brain in the right way, but I definitely mm -hmm. appreciated how neat that game was. Uh, one of my favorites, which I was just showing off, is Alien Frontiers, which uses uh, dice as your ships. And uh, you you roll the whole mess at the beginning of your turn and then can take all of your actions with all of your dice on your turn. Uh, and then those dice are not removed until it's your turn again. So that's how the, the things get blocked off. But one of the spaces talking about ways to get around blocked spaces in Alien Frontiers is like a... It's a laser cannon that if you get... I think it's a straight you can knock somebody's die off the board, um, which can open up a space for you to then place one of your dice on it, um, which can be very helpful uh, when, when someone has something that you really want. Uh, that actually sounds really fun. I've never played Alien Frontiers, but I, your description makes me want to give it a try. It's, it's been one of my favorites for many years now, uh, since it first came out. I, just, I, I love how the system works. It's, it's an area control game as well. Uh, and then the dice placement is, is how you get those resources to place the stuff on the planet. So would what would you say is your favorite worker placement game? Is it Alien Frontiers or is there another that has your heart even more strongly? Well, you know, give me a second. I have my top 100 right here. Oh, uh, we're getting spoilers. I love it. So I have, I have two right next to each other. I'm not going to say where they are. Alien okay. Frontiers is one of them. Viticulture is the other, uh, which is another. That's more of a traditional. Well, not quite, though. I like the way that Viticulture uses the placement. Uh, there are a certain number of spaces for each action on the board. And based on the number of players, a certain number of them will be available. But usually the first one has some sort of bonus attached to it. You'll get like extra money or maybe get to draw an extra card or something. And then the second one is pretty standard. Um, but then you also have one large worker that can go anywhere. So that is your one action that you know you are going to be able to do no matter what. And then if he, if this person is going somewhere, I'm reserving them for that. Where else do I need to go that I know I need to compete for? And, and what order do I want to place? And plus, the structure of Viticulture has seasons, and so you need to save some of your workers for the next season, or else you're not going to be able to do anything <laughs> in the next season. Um, and that is a really tricky system. Um, in fact, maybe I've I should played... flip -flop them. Oh, I've only played Viticulture once, just within the past year. Um, it. Honestly, it's funny. It feels like it wasn't that long ago, but the pandemic has been going on so long at this point that I'm pretty sure it might have been actually close to a year ago now. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I had a friend that loves it teach it to me, and I really enjoyed it a lot. I definitely want to play more. And we played with one of these expansions, I want to say. Uh, it was the Essential Edition, and we played with the, the special workers, and the hmm. seasons change a little bit, I think. Uh, well, yeah, if you're playing with Tuscany, which is yes. uh, the expansion, has it goes from a two-season board to a four-season board. Yes, so that is what we played with, the four seasons and the specialized workers that do cool things or whatever, and it was great. Um, 
a couple other games that I really enjoy. I know we're we're all up on time a little bit, but that's because we kind of got a late start. Late. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pursuit of Happiness is one of my favorites that I don't hear talked about often enough. Um, I love Pursuit of Happiness so, so, so much. And I own every expansion for it. And it is amazing. Um, I've already mentioned Champions of Midgard and Architects. I had Viticulture on my list as well. Uh, Dinosaur Island and Near and Far are the other two that I would shout out as games that I really enjoy. Okay. Um, Dinosaur Island, I, I feel so bad. I have yet to play Dinosaur Island. I own it. I've got it. I loaned it out to uh, some folks at a convention so they could run it with my copy. I still haven't played the game. I know the designer from high school. I still haven't played it. I'm so sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, though, I, th I think everybody kind of understands that, like, there's a lot of games. And even the great ones. Like, I honestly... I don't, I've only played it a handful of times. I would love to play it more. The thing about Dinosaur Island specifically, and this actually applies to a few other worker placement games as well, it's a little bit of a bear to set up. Hmm. The playing of the game isn't actually that bad, truly. Like, there's a, there's a few moving pieces and things you need to learn, but, like, games like that can be a little bit daunting just to set them up. Uh, Champions of Midgard kind of is another one. Like, okay, you've got all of these things and these things and these boards and those pieces. And it's not horrible by any means. And especially once you become familiar with them, then it's, you know, it gets way easier. But if you're getting into a game like that and you open up the box and there's so many pieces and parts, that can be like, okay, you know what? Let's just pull this other thing off the shelf that has less pieces than I already know how to play. Like, even if you want to play the thing, it's it's sometimes hard to get the time to do it. The only other one I wanted to mention before we, we uh, end the topic is Copycat, uh, which is Freedom and Freeze's mashup game, which uses worker placement and deck building and like the through the ages drafting mechanism. It's this mashup of all these different popular mechanisms and uh, with a goofy election theme. And I like it a lot. I've heard interesting things about that one. I've never played it. It's... Uh, well, people in the chat have been putting some of the games that they really like into the chat, which is awesome. Um, seeing another dice one called Eng Endangered from Coralou. Um, oh, Amy said yeah. Viticulture Endangered actually is good. works. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I played that. It's a cooperative game about saving animals. And, and yes, you have you roll your dice and, and then you're placing them on uh, action spaces. And you have to place a larger die value than anything else that's already there. So based on what you and the rest of the team want to do, you have to make sure you don't put too high a die on an action that somebody else wants to take on their turn. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so if anybody else has questions for us, whether they are re related to worker placement games or anything else, uh, my new house, Eric's hopefully going to get his new house soon I hope so. type stuff. I hope so. Um, the home buying process in general, <laughs> which we were both in the thick of oh yeah uh or, so yes no go ahead eric i was gonna say that uh, as people if they are asking any questions in the chat um i i once did uh, or i once i recently did an ama on reddit this this week um i i think you can still find it out there yeah, somewhere it'll still be there um and, and had a lovely time chatting with folks and answering questions about uh podcast production and board games and audiobooks and all sorts of fun stuff uh so uh, some of those questions the answer may already be out there on the interwebs and and i i was a little nervous about the whole thing it actually worked out very well everyone was very nice um i was i was i'm very new to reddit i in fact got i signed up for an account just to do this ama because they asked and uh and it was great. It was fun. I should do another one. That's cool. I uh, I will admit I don't hang out there anymore. I used to a lot. That's actually how I met Ambi and Cassidy to create Board Game Blitz was on Reddit. And then I was a moderator on the Board Game subreddit for a few years. And there are some very good parts of that community. And the AMAs are one of those things. <laughs> when, are we to, when are we giving a home buying class? We should combine our knowledge uh, and, lessons and we'll call learned. it what not to do. No, <laughs> no, I, uh, I buying a house is daunting and it doesn't matter how 
smart you think you are or if you have all of the people in place, sometimes things just go sideways and it's nobody's fault and you just kind of have to roll with the punches to some degree. And there's something uniquely terrifying about signing a piece of paper about how much money you now owe. Oh my for, gosh. For this building that you now own. Although like, you don't own it because the bank still owns a significant portion of it, but you're on the hook to, to pay for it. And it's like that. Wow. That's, that is a it's lot. a lot of money. I, and, and it's not even just that, like, I, when I'm looking at the paperwork, it's not the amount of the house. It's also the total amount that I will end up paying in the house and interest. And I was like, oh, that number is a lot larger. And so my realtor very kindly was like, you know, I don't, you know, know what your situation is going to be going forward. But if you paid a 100 extra dollars per month, this is how much money you'd save in the end. And I was like, wow. That is so a lesson that I, I know deep down, but we haven't done maybe on this next purchase we'll try and... i yeah like my money situation is a little bit uh tenuous at the moment but i definitely if i have extra money to throw at it at some point i'm gonna do that just to get the principal down so i end up paying less compounding interest over time uh, hey Lux is saying there should be a board game about the dice tower and have meeple workers of crystal and eric and all the others where I attack with a microphone and Crystal has a unicorn. I mean, I think I would I would like swap people with bunny ears, right? Like, <laughs> like I, this this would be my form of attack. <laughs> I mean, some have fleed from that very action right there. Yeah, uh, it's very true. So very quickly, I mean, there's a couple of other questions that have come by. Uh, favorite Carcassonne expansion. I don't know if I've played enough of them. I've, I have not played Carcassonne a ton over the years. I've played it here and there, but I don't know if I could name a favorite. Uh, my favorite is Traders and Builders. I think that's the one that adds the pig meeples um, and some cool little like goods, goods tokens that you can then do like a little extra scoring at the end of the game with, um, which is, is fun. It gives you, I think, benefits for closing other people's stuff. So that, that's an interesting extra twist. Like, I might close this little castle because it has a token I want on it. Okay. Yeah. Anything else we want to answer before we... <laughs> Hawksville said, Eric has a point, but the feeling you get when you make the final payment on your mortgage is the best. That's true. Yeah, but the thing is, for me, that's not happening until 2050. <laughs> so... I have yeah, not been able to do that yet, other than... Yeah, assuming I don't pay more than the, I, I, I have to, I will be 65 years old when the house is paid off. Wow, that's a... that's. I don't want to think about being 65. That, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tristan asks, if approached, would Eric do voiceovers for things like animation? Sure. Yes, you know how to find me. And... Additionally, would Eric welcome more professional voice actors into the board game space, like in apps? Oh, so like people taking my jobs. That's what you're you're asking. Um, sure. Yeah. The more the, more the merrier. And, and in fact, it's you know, there are plenty of uh, other voice actors, voice professionals that are working in this space, which is great. I am not annoyed in the least that I'm not on certain major board game projects at all. It's fine. Everything's fine. Well, I mean, so what we need to do is we need to make sure that board game publishers know that they should do more app narration and yes. cool app voices. So that way there is more voice work for Eric and the and other people. Everybody. Then everybody's happy. I yeah. like it. That, that sounds like a plan. All right. Well, we're we're definitely past our seven o'clock uh, ending time. Thank you all for bearing with us at the beginning when we were having the technical issues. We apologize for that. Um, if you all could do us a favor, and if you like what happened after the technical yes, issue, after don't don't occurred, rate what happened before. Hit the thumbs up button on this video and let the YouTube algorithms and all your YouTube friends know that you really enjoyed it. And we will. See you all again in two weeks. I will definitely be in my new house. Yes. And I am very excited to have that be the case. I just, I can't wait to get into it this weekend. Um, but we really enjoy you all hanging out with us and playing along with the game. Uh, Eric, do you have any final closing thoughts? Golly, no. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, no. 
I mean, I've got so some, but So we will down. see you all again, again, two weeks from tonight on Wednesday. Oh my gosh, that's going to be October 14th yeah. uh, at 6 p.m. Pacific, <laughs> 9 p.m. Eastern. So until then, I'm Crystal. I'm Eric. And you've been watching Dice Tower tonight. Thank you for watching. Promotional consideration has been provided by game publishers in the form of review copies of games. Crystal and I will see you in two weeks for another installment on October 14th. Our show is supported by viewers like you. Thank you. Dice Tower Tonight is produced by Crystal and me with assistance from Tom Vassell, Mike Delisio, Roy Candidate, and Rob Searing. Battle cries for bards provided by Fortune and Glory. Timothy Pinkham composed our theme, and hosting is provided by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games at great prices at coolstuffinc.com. Give us your feedback on the Dice Tower Guild at Board Game Geek on Facebook or Twitter, or by emailing us at crystal at dicetower.com or eric at dicetower.com. And don't forget to visit the other shows in the Dice Tower Network. Find something new at dicetowernetwork.com. Until next time, from all of us at the Dice Tower, have, have fun, fun gaming! gaming. Hawkskull just put in the chat that there's only four Dice Tower tonights until Christmas, and my mind is <laughs> literally blown. Ah, no. How is that a thing? No, that can't be right. Right? Oh, it can't. Okay, four to Christmas. Oh, boy. No. No. 2020. I don't. Uh, time. All right. Good night, everybody. Right. I Bye, gotta everyone. Sleep. Bye.